All right, so... The text for today is found in Acts chapter 6, verse 19. Welcome back to Dr. Phil, everyone. Let's go. Hats on. Now, the brain's warm. <laughs> Phil, what's the longest sermon ever preached in the world, you reckon? Well, in the Guinness Book of Records, mm. there's, if memory serves me right, there was a person who preached for uh, a number of days. Yes, he, he did. He started, he started in Genesis and he worked through the Bible. Well, the actual current record was set in 2019 and it's a, a oh. record of 53 hours and 18 minutes. The guy preached through 40 of his sermons, used 600 PowerPoint slides, and it was all to raise money. I bet he didn't get much. <laughs> In our congregation here, yeah. right, the way to raise money would be, how much will you pay for me not to preach? Get him off! Oh. Get him off! Acts chapter 7 brings us to the longest recorded sermon in the book of Acts, done by one of the Magnificent Seven, Stephen. Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, stands up before the Sanhedrin and begins to preach. My question, Phil, is what is the point of a sermon in your mind? Well, a sermon ultimately is supposed to achieve a reaction from people. is meant to inform the mind, the heart, and, and core, and the spirit, and to put the person in touch with something that God wants to say to them. Why did Stephen have a platform at this point? Why did they even ah, listen to well, him? Well, see, in Acts chapter 6, remember we saw that because of the issue of, you know, the division of, of food aid, yes. it wasn't working out, so they appointed seven men one of whom is Stephen. The rest of Acts chapter 6 deals with Stephen going around witnessing to Jesus in a, in a synagogue called the Synagogue of the Freedmen, mm -hmm. which probably refers to people who may have been slaves of the Romans or, uh, and have been set free and have come back to Jerusalem. They've established the synagogue. Sounds like a really good indie pop band though, doesn't it? Forget compliments of Gus, you yeah. can start a new one. The yeah. Synagogue of the Freedmen. <laughs> We are the freed men! We are the freed men! It tells us that God is working through him. Not only did God do signs and wonders through the apostles, but he's also doing it through the non-apostles. Yeah, one of the Magnificent Seven. Correct. He's speaking about Jesus, but in the process of speaking about Jesus, I think he's speaking about Jesus being the fulfillment of the law mm -hmm. and the prophets. All of that creates a whole level of angst in the in the synagogue. They accuse him of being of being speaking against Moses and the temple. And he is actually, obviously, he knows what Jesus said about destroy this temple and I will rebuild it because they quote him as saying, Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place, change the customs that Moses gave. Wow. Right? Stephen, one of the magnificent seven, gets accused of Blasphemy, really. Blasphemy. Now he stands up, and the scripture records this as Stephen's sermon. How was it actually well, presented? Well, it's actually, it's probably more, it really should be thought of as his defense, right? Right. Mm. What Stephen has been accused of as being, being attacking Moses in the temple. And as he speaks through what he's saying, mm -hmm. right, he's actually showing that he is not actually attacking Moses in the temple. And now he's coming to right. a defense. And isn't a great sermon a great defense of the gospel? It is. Stephen has come to understand that the sacrifice of Jesus makes all other sacrifices redundant. So in that sense, there's no need for a temple. So Stephen comes in, preaches a sermon, makes all of their jobs redundant, and this is all to prove that God is with us everywhere, always, through the person of Jesus. 